Hello again, I am Blunty, and just before I crashed out for the day yesterday, I smashed together a video real quick about the surprise announcement that hit us of Monster Hunter Now. And I was very confused about something in that video, but we'll come back to that at the end of this video, because my confusion is now cleared up, and it's given me reason to be maybe more hopeful than I otherwise would be, so stick around for that. But to the core point of this video, a new Monster Hunter game, very exciting, but this one's developed by Nantic and it's mobile only, uh, and they are the uh, Pokemon Go people, and Pokemon Go does not have what you would call a stellar reputation right now these days, and uh, Niantic are, well, quite heavily criticised by everywhere I look uh, in the Pokemon Go fan base. Um, they really, really hate the developers Niantic and seem to play the game uh, out of a spite or habit or addiction, but um, are not particularly enjoying the experience and are very, very angry at the developer and the choices they've made, and I don't know why they don't just walk away from the game if that's the case. In any case, Monster Hunter Now will be in the same vein. It's an augmented reality and geolocation type thing. But that announcement yesterday didn't actually have much information uh, about the rest of the core gameplay. We got some brief snippets of uh, battle gameplay without any UI or anything. Um, and nothing else about how the game actually flows or works. Or indeed how similar or different it is to Pokemon Go. So with basically zero useful information in the original announcement and a lot of worry that Niantic are going to Niantic all up inside their Niantic stained Niantic pants, um, and, and yes, Niantic is a code phrase for poop right now, uh, I went looking for some real gameplay details. Surely there had to be more out there somewhere. So let's dive on in and see what we can see of Monster Hunter Now gameplay details and mechanics breakdown. So first real details came rolling in shortly after I published yesterday's video, in fact, which was slightly annoying. <laughs> they came in the form of an official blog post from Niantic themselves. Alongside the details we already knew from the beta sign-up page, like the scheduled launch in September, uh, and how the game will be available on the App Store for iOS and Google Play, and then a bunch of marketing fluff about how popular Monster Hunter is and how accessible to new and old players alike this game is intended to be, we get the first real gameplay mechanic descriptions. In Monster Hunter Now, there's an item called the Paintball. By using the Paintball on a monster that you encounter, you can bring the monster back home and hunt it alone or with someone else. And even when you're walking around without playing the game, your companion can mark any monsters you pass by with the paintball so you can enjoy hunting them even after returning home. Now, in this context, the phrase your companion most likely means your palico, those little semi-anthro cat-like peeps that help you out in hunts, and other gameplay mechanics depending on which Monster Hunter game we're talking about. Now, that paintball thing makes me worry uh, instantly, of course. Are we going to get different levels of paintballs? Are they going to be like pokeballs where different levels of paintballs have different effectiveness over different amounts of time or maybe sometimes they can fail and you have to get the fancy ones to make sure you tag them and all that kind of crap in other words are they going to try and make you feel the need to buy the better paintballs we'll have to wait and see on that but the paintball 2 is an old mechanic from old Monster Hunter games it was abandoned in Monster Hunter World Iceborne Rise and Sunbreak in favor of other more convenient or more seamless ways to track a monster's location across the map some old school Monster Hunter players lament the disappearance of the paintball but that is, bizarrely, the only bit of gameplay mechanics actually explained officially in the blog post. However, I also found a lot more details on a site called Augria. Probably how you pronounce it, my best guess. It's a blog site specifically about AR games. And here we have not just way more useful details, but even some screenshots from an early closed playtesting event that apparently operated in Japan. It was an early test version of the game, so final game may and probably will look far more polished, and some of these mechanics may change or be removed or be replaced, but at least it gives us an idea of the direction of things. As you may imagine, character progression is similar to the proper full-fat Monster Hunter titles. You go out, you hunt monsters for their parts, and collect other passive resources in order to craft and upgrade your weapons and armor so you can fight even tougher monsters. And engaging in fights also increases your hunter rank, which in normal Monster Hunter games can serve as a content gate, and in this game perhaps will do something similar, locking different kinds of monsters capable of spawning until you've progressed to a certain point. Much like Pokemon Go, there'll be a resource node kind of deal, but instead of Pokestops, 
That was what they're called, right? Poker stops? Yeah, I think so. Um, there'll, there'll be Monster Hunter style mining and gathering nodes instead for metals and bones and plants and honey and the like. So, so different in cosmetic function only. This actually reminds me a little bit more of the failed uh, Minecraft AR game where you had to sort of go to different nodes and mine up different materials instead of having a singular poker stop for RNG drops. There also seems to be different biomes laid over the map, although every screenshot uh, we have here reads Swamp. But one of my big questions, probably the main question, was about the actual fighting mechanics. Because the superbly crafted fight systems in Monster Hunter are the reason to play this game. That's, that's the whole core thing about these games, the fights are fantastic. Orgria reports that media outlets that had hands-on with the demo said the movement and combat was faithfully adapted to fit the mobile screen. I have my doubts about that from the information that flowed on from that because it doesn't seem very faithful to me. Because you tap to attack, swipe to dodge, and hold down for special charged attacks or guards depending on the weapon. This, of course, is way dumbed down from the control and fight mechanics from the real games and doesn't feel very faithful to me, but it's also pretty in line with what one would expect from a mobile game. And to me, this all sounds a little bit like the combat from Monster Hunter Explore, a mobile game for iOS and Android from 2015 that never actually saw release outside of Japan and has long been shut down. It had an on-screen thumbpad for proper full directional input and a tap to attack mechanic and a separate guard button. So in many ways, that seems like a better mechanic for a game like this. Most well, now seems to be a little bit similar, but also worse in that positioning is via dodging left or right only with no free movement otherwise, which in a Monster Hunter game, positioning is a key aspect of the battle mechanic. So missing even that much is already pretty disappointing. When you start a fight, you have the option to fight it alone or fight with friends. And in this case, fighting with friends, much like Pokemon Go, just means anyone physically nearby you. So not actual friends at all, but most likely just randos that happen to be close by. Uh, we don't know how many players can join a hunt, but it is part of the game lore that by guild lore, no more than four hunters can participate in a standard hunt. So it's probably going to be four players. Also, another key aspect of the Monster Hunter games is being gimped big time. The technicality and stamina required for a fight. Turns out monster fights last 75 seconds. You can break parts and chop tails as usual, but if you don't manage to actually defeat the monster in 75 seconds, it will just walk away. It will escape. So that's super lame. It makes some sense for a game of this type, sure, but that's a pretty big nerf to the gameplay and feel of Monster Hunter. The whole thing with Monster Hunter is, you know, basically every fight is supposed to feel like a boss fight would in a normal game. With fights taking even a halfway decent player anywhere from, you know, five or six minutes to 20 minutes, or even more depending on your skill, there is a timer of 50 minutes for each hunt. And it's not uncommon for beginner players to take half an hour or more as they learn the game. This will vary depending on your weapon of choice, your skill level of course, the monster and your gear set. Speaking personally, I've got thousands of hours in these games at this point and the average hunt I suppose would take me anywhere between 4 and 7 minutes depending. So nuking every single fight to a minute and 15 seconds only? is a huge nerf to making the monsters feel like actually imposing and powerful entities you're fighting against. That's lame. But then again, who the hell wants to sit there and tap and swipe for 10 minutes or more solid? Probably for the best that this gimped control scheme and gimped mechanics is also gimped by a timer and weak as crap monsters. But it ain't gonna feel like Monster Hunter, I can tell you that part for free. It might look like Monster Hunter, but it's not gonna feel like Monster Hunter. Additionally, monsters will telegraph their attacks apparently by blinking bright red. So that's another nerf to the skill required and, um, you know, the fun part of the games. Because, once more, a core part of the Monster Hunter experience is having to actually learn the monster's movements and patterns. Learn what postures and animations and noises indicate what attacks are most likely to come next. And use those signals to choose to whether attack or defend or reposition. It's a very rewarding system. 
with a wonderful learning curve and very high skills ceiling. And when you get really good at it, you feel like a total friggin' hero. It feels amazing when you just nail your predictions precisely. It's brilliant. But if all you have to do in this game is make sure you swipe when the whole friggin' monster starts blinking bright red, yeah, that's... That's much, much more boring, isn't it? And dumps the skill needed and sense of being a badass right to the floor. But, according again to Aguria, uh, playtesters have said it's still important to memorize attack patterns and the glowing identifiers as all monsters are different. So, um, that sounds a bit like astroturfing to me. I don't know whether that came from uh, press or someone masquerading as press. It's hard to imagine this system feeling like proper monster hunter at all. But hey, benefit of the doubt, maybe it's not super duper nerfed, maybe it's just a little super nerfed. At least, as is the norm for Monster Hunter, you'll be able to customize your hunter character and their Palico helper, set your own weapon and gear loadouts and the like, and I'm sure, I am sure they'll be selling you all kinds of cosmetic layering options too. They're probably even going to be selling you boxes of crafting materials, if not outright selling you upgraded gear or items that can upgrade your gear directly. Because it is Niantic, and it is a mobile game, and you can bet your friggin' ass it's going to be monetized up the yin yang. Apparently Playtest has also said the game only had four weapons in the demo. And that's from uh, 14 in the main series, by the way. I suspect there will be more in the final game, of course. I should bloody well hope so, at least. But I also suspect there will be still some missing, because not every weapon is going to work with this gimped gameplay mechanic. Given the limited mechanics, I don't see how there will be effectively much mechanical difference in the heavy and light bow guns, for example, especially as there is apparently only two ammo types, normal and shotgun. Shotgun? Shotgun? I'm hoping that's a translation error or something, or, or maybe a quote from someone who never played a Monster Hunter game before, because that's, that's not a thing in Monster Hunter. There's spread ammo, and there's shrapnel ammo, which are similar to a very, very widespread shotgun kind of effect, but that's about as close as you get. And I really can't see the acrobatics of Aerial Insect Glaive working very well with this gimped positioning and movement system either, or even just essence collecting, for that matter. How are you going to do that with this kind of control scheme? And that makes me wonder if even two of the other favorite weapons of mine will even work at all with this setup. The Switch Axe and the Charge Blade. Both rely on more sophisticated mechanical charge and transform mechanics that I just can't see working at all in the piddly 75 second time frame of a hunt in this game and with a tap swipe hold gameplay mechanic. These are much more technical weapons and they just can't work like this. And in fact, now that I think about it, the teaser trailer we saw yesterday, we only saw Sword and Shield, Longsword, Greatsword and Bowgun which are, as it turns out, the exact same four weapons that the playtest had. All of which are very basic input weapons with comparatively simple mechanics measured beside the likes of the charge blade, switch axe, insect glaive, hunting horn and gun lance play styles, for example. I mean, hammer would probably still work fine with this gimped gameplay, but lance probably wouldn't, dual blades might do, although they would still have to have some pretty big compromises to their mechanics as well. Bow would probably also be pointless when Bowgun will effectively be identical considering the ammo mechanic limitations, so yeah, your very favourite weapon might not be in the game at all or be so heavily gimped it's basically unrecognisable for the playstyle that you like it for. So hey, what about that thing I was confused about? The announcement on Twitter said this was a Capcom and Niantic deal. But the announcement that we got back in November last year about a new Monster Hunter Mobile game in development was to be developed by Timmy, or T-I-M-I, -I. still not sure how to pronounce that, we'll call it Timmy. Um, Timmy are a Tencent-owned Chinese developer. So that was very confusing. We was expecting something from Timmy and we got Niantic. Did they change devs? That seems unlikely considering how very, very Pokemon Go Monster Hunter now seems. It's very obviously a Niantic game from the ground up. Turns out though, they're separate things. So we're getting two new Monster Hunter mobile games. One we know about and one we don't. The one from Timmy is still a complete mystery. We know it's coming. We don't know when, what it is or anything. Although the brief description that we got back in that November announcement on the official blog page for it is um, so 
generic that it still sounds like the Nantic game. The in-development game will reproduce the hunting actions that define what's on a series and offers plays a new game experience unique for mobile devices and phones, with an aim to give global hunters, experienced or new, the freedom to hunt as they desire, anytime and anywhere. That still sounds like it could be describing Monster Hunter Now to me, but you know, whatever. I'm really hoping now, at least, that the Timmy game is a more traditional Monster Hunter ARPG game. Although, that said, it is still Tencent, so it's more than likely going to be a disgustingly monetized mess of a thing. But hey, I guess we'll just have to wait and see, and I will sit here and hope against hope that it is a more traditional Monster Hunter game, at, at, at the very least in the fighting mechanics. All right, give me, give me some more sophisticated on-screen controls. Give me the ability to attach a controller to mobile mobile phone to use this properly as a proper Monsanto fighting experience. I don't know, no point getting all worked up about that yet. We know nothing about it. In the meantime, I still plan on giving Monsanto now a fair go, of course, but my expectations are uh, tempered, let's say, by this new knowledge about the mechanics uh, and how this game supposedly works. Still excited about having a new Monsanto game. I mean, even if I only get, like, the, the, the three months that I got out of Pokemon Go before I walked away from that game and never came back to it ever again, even if I only get, you know, a couple of months out of this game, it's, it's you know, it's at least something interesting to poke around at for a while. Quite frankly, you can't expect much more than that from a mobile game unless you are some sort of, um, savage. <laughs> Thank you for watching. I am Blunty. I will catch you next time. Thank you, as always, to the patrons scrolling up above there. Play, play, play your games on proper... Machines, people. My boss sucks.